Hare Krishna, we continue reading from teachings of Queen Kunti. We are on prayer number 13, the vital force of the universe, which is in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text 30. Of course, it is bewildering, O soul of the universe, that you work, though you are inactive, and that you take birth, though you are the vital force and the unborn. You yourself descend among animals, men, sages, and aquatics. Verily, this is bewildering. So we have been reading the purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada, and we will continue to read the purport. When Krishna appeared on earth, not everyone knew that he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although when there was need, he proved himself the Supreme God, he generally appeared to be just like an ordinary human being. So when Krishna came, not everyone knew that, oh, this is the cause of all causes. This is the supreme personality of God. And this is the, um, what is that? Origin, uh, uh, Lord Brahma says, Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bijami, the origin of everyone and everything. Not everyone knew that. Only few people knew it. You know, otherwise, how otherwise Shishupal was going on giving ill names to Krishna, calling ill names, or Duryodhan didn't even listen to Krishna's peace proposal. So not everyone knew. Some, he, whenever there was a need to prove himself that he's the Supreme Lord, he proved it. But generally, everyone thought he's a normal, ordinary human being. Therefore, Sukadev Goswami, while describing how Krishna played as one of the coward boys, points out Krishna's identity. Who is this cowherd boy? Sukadev Goswami says, Itam satam brahma sukhanu bhutaya. The impersonalists meditate upon the impersonal Brahman and thus feel some transcendental bliss. But Sukadev Goswami points out that the source of that transcendental bliss is here, Krishna. So Sukadev Goswami is saying that the source of all transcendental bliss, the, so, the source of the impersonal Brahman is Krishna. Everything is coming from Krishna. The Brahman is also coming from Krishna. The impersonal Brahman is coming from Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything. Aham sarvasya prabhavaha. And therefore, the transcendental bliss that the impersonalists try to experience by meditating on the impersonal Brahman, in fact, comes from Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham sarvasya prabhava mata sarvam pravartate iti, iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samanvitaha. Everything comes from me. The wise who know this, they engage in my devotional service. Every, he says that everything comes from me. So the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, the, the happiness situated, the happiness of being situated on the platform of the soul is also coming from Krishna. That's also coming from Krishna. So Kadev Goswami says, here is the person who is the source of Brahma Sukha, the transcendental bliss that comes from realization of Brahman. So when we are situated on the platform of the soul, we feel powerful, we feel happy, we feel knowledge, we feel whatever the soul feels. Yeah. So who is the source of that? That is Krishna. That is Krishna. A devotee is always prepared to render service to the Lord. Dasyam gatanam para devatena. But for those who are under the spell of illusory energy, he is an ordinary boy. Maya shritanam naradara kena. Krishna deals with different living entities according to their conceptions. For those who regard Krishna as an ordinary human being, Krishna will deal like an ordinary human being. Whereas devotees who accept Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead will enjoy the association of the supreme personality of Godhead. Of course, the object of the impersonalist is the Brahma Jyoti, the impersonal effulgence of the Supreme. But Krishna is the source of that effulgence. Therefore, Krishna is everything. Brahmeti, Parmatmeti, Bhagwan Iti, Shabdayate. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, as one surrenders to me, 
I reciprocate accordingly. As one desires to associate with me, I reciprocate with them in that same way. Someone who wants to see Krishna as a human being will see Krishna as an ordinary human being. Someone who sees Krishna as the, uh, as the Supreme Lord, he will enjoy the association of Krishna. And the, the impersonalist who wants to remain, who wants to be on the platform of the Brahma Jyoti, he of course will, will be in that platform of the Brahma Jyoti, but the source of that Brahma Jyoti is Krishna. So therefore it is said Krishna is everything. Brahmeti Parmatmeti Bhagwan Iti Shabdayate. Krishna is everything. We are not Krishna. We are parts and parcels of Krishna. So we are not everything, but Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything. Yet the cowherd boys are able to play with that same Krishna, the exalted personality of Godhead. How have they become so fortunate that they are able to play with him? Bhagavatam 10, 12, 11 says this. Itam satam brahma sukhanu bhutya dasyam gatanam para devatena maya shritanam naradarakena saradam vijar, vijaruhu kritapunya punjaha. The coward boys playing with Krishna are also not ordinary for they have attained the highest perfection of being able to play with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna's friends that he's playing with in Goloka Vrindavan, these are not ordinary souls like us. No, they are not conditioned souls. They are his um, associates. Anyone who is... Who, who, who can associate with Krishna, then they have attained the highest perfection. They are situated in the original position. There's nothing more to achieve. They, are, they have realized who they are and that's who they are. You know, for us, we are thinking we are the body. We don't know who we are. We have to realize. So we are on the journey of self-realization. But the coward boys, they are who they are. They are coward boys. How did they achieve this position? Krita Punya Punjaha, by many, many lives of pious activities. So they achieved this by many, many lives of pious activities. For many, many lives, these boys underwent austerities and penances to achieve the highest perfection of life. And now they have the opportunity to play with Krishna personally on an equal level. They do not know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for that is the nature of Vrindavan Leela, Krishna's pastimes. Krishna's pastimes in the village of Vrindavan. So the Brajbasis, they don't, they don't know. They don't, uh, well, they do know because they have done so much austerities. They've read all the way. They, they know all the, they have all the knowledge. But the Madhurya, the, the love for Krishna supersedes the knowledge that he is God. So Prabhupada would give the example that the president is called Mr. President when he's in the office and he is, um, he is his associates, his colleagues, or his, uh, well, the people working with him, they all regard him as Mr. President. But when he goes home, when, we, when he's with his wife, with his children, with his parents, with his grandchildren, Nobody regards him as Mr. President. Then they regard him as their son or as their, their father or as their husband. You know? So that, that supersedes, that supersedes the knowledge that he is the president. So the Brajbasis, Brajbasis have already, they're, they're situated in their original position. They've, re, they've revived their love for Krishna. So for them, the, that he's the Lord, is secondary, but he is the most lovable object. That is more important for them. So that is Vrindavan Lila. Now, not knowing Krishna's identity, the coward boys simply love Krishna, and their love is unending. This is true of everyone in Vrindavan. For example, Yashoda Mata and Nanda Maharaj, Krishna's mother and father, love Krishna with paternal affection. 
Similarly, Krishna's friends love Krishna. Krishna's girlfriends love Krishna. The trees love Krishna. The water loves Krishna. The flowers, the calves, the calves, everyone loves Krishna. That is the nature of Rindavan. So if we simply learn how to love Krishna, we can immediately transform this world into Vrindavan. That is how, if we learn to love Krishna, then this world, which we are seeing it so, so much full of misery, so much full of um, unhappiness, that will transform into Vrindavan, simply if we learn how to love Krishna. In Vrindavan, everyone loves Krishna. And but what are we thinking? Why is everyone loves Krishna? Everyone should love me. Huh? Why, why everyone should love Krishna, the girlfriends, the trees, the water, the birds, the cows? Why? They should love me. Everyone should love me. Well, then that's the reason we are here in the material world. And that's the reason this the material world is a place of miseries. It's a place where there is anxiety. There's no peace. Why? Because everyone is saying that I am Krishna, so you should worship me. That's what causes the conflict, conflict of interest. This is the only central point, how to love Krishna. Prema Pumartho Mahan. People are generally pursuing dharma, artha, kama, moksha, religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disregarded these four things. These are not what is to be achieved in life, he said. The real goal of life is love of Krishna. Prema Pumartho Mahan. Prema Pumartho Mahan. To love Krishna. That is the real goal of life. So, and how can we revive that love? Here and we chant. Lord Chaitanya told us the goal of life and he told us how we can achieve the goal of life. Just hear and chant. Is that okay? Did you want to add anything or yes. comment on anything? No. Would you like to add anything? No. No? No, so we'll this stop here. Then. This one line is very, very beautiful. Which uh, one? We can immediately transform this world into Vrindavan simply mm. if we know how to love Krishna. Yeah, wonderful. Yes. That's all we have to do. Simply really how to love Krishna. Mm. We can yeah. transform this world into Vrindavan. Yeah. True. And but then we might say, oh, but I'm the soul. Why do, why do I have to do anything with the world? But right now we are in the world. No? We are in the body. Yeah, we are in the body right now. So how, how to transform right now also? Why wait? Why wait till the time we leave the body? You know, right now, just learn how to love Krishna. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. So on that note, we'll stop here for today. Kunti Marani ki jai, Shla Prabhupad ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vindaki jai. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for listening and joining in.